In the southern French city of Toulouse, the future has arrived, even if it might not look like it at first glance. Airbus has its headquarters here, and the airplane manufacturer is taking part in an international congress in the city. At the event, Yari Kineret has brought together representatives from science and industry. He's collected around a billion euros for the European research initiative Graphene Flagship. Its goal is to explore uses for the high-tech material, which is highly conductive and practically invisible. So you're telling me that there is graphene here? There is graphene layer here. Uh, that <laughs> demonstrates our emperor's new clothes. Here. <laughs> <laughs> So there is a graphene layer behind the poster uh, that when we touch, we can, um, we can detect the, the touch on the graphene layer. All the leads have been created with uh, graphene ink. Graphene is a one atom thick layer of carbon, incredibly thin yet extremely tough. That makes it the perfect material for aeronautics applications. In the 1950s, plastic revolutionized the industry. Scientists expect graphene to do that in the 21st century. Physics Nobel laureate Albert Fer is also convinced the material has a bright future. I am excited by many topics in physics, but graphene is exciting. And uh, after this meeting, uh, I become a little more excited. Even. <laughs> Revolution is a big word. Uh, I, think, I think evolution is much nicer. But uh, of course, graphene is a disruptive change. Uh, so in some areas, uh, you will have to make small revolutions to, uh, to move forward. Like in the aviation industry, Roland Thévenin has more than 30 years' experience with tough but ultralight construction materials in the business. They lower fuel consumption and resist wear. Although he sees graphene's promise, he's still a little skeptical about time frames. Graphene is very, at the very early beginning. And I know that for the scientists it's very promising, but promising for our business is not enough, you know. That means when, the, uh, when you would like to get a technology on an aircraft, it has to be available almost 10 years before any application, and five years before it has to be on the shelf. That means graphene is probably something good for the next decades, but today I cannot answer at all what can be the future of that. So maybe the revolution won't be spreading from Toulouse to every corner of the world just yet. But that hasn't dampened the enthusiasm surrounding the high-tech material. Yari Kineret has helped organize the event's first graphene workshop for representatives from industry. They can make their expectations clear to researchers while scientists have an opportunity to explain what's currently possible and what's not. In the U.S. and Asia, researchers, entrepreneurs and policymakers are already cooperating to turn lab results into products. The graphene gold rush has begun and European researchers are up against some stiff competition. China um, very recently uh, has started to invest quite a lot of money in graphene. I don't know the exact numbers, uh, but when you look, for instance, uh, in uh, patent applications, there are a lot of patent applications coming from China. There are a lot of articles published by uh, Chinese researchers. Uh, so in terms of uh, uh, quantity, uh, they are very good, but not all of them uh, have very high quality. High-rise buildings could be built using graphene someday. The material could make computers faster and more powerful. But it will take a lot more research and many more conferences before the material is used on a wide scale. The event in Toulouse has done its part to help it along. Europe is definitely part of the international race to explore the many potential uses of graphene.